Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I'm going to talk about uh, going offline things. Basically, going offline with uh, Android Labs, which is a contract I've worked with for a while. Uh, it's something I work with, uh, with a lot. And if you notice, Android Labs, the first layer in, in every work is uh, AOL. So I've been trying to find this the AOL stack uh, as the future of programming. Uh, Anyways, uh, my name is Matthias, I go by Martin Coach, and I'm uh, here GitHub. Um, I work for this cool uh, organization called the uh, Dev Project. Uh, we're just a, a bunch of people getting paid by nonprofits to work on uh, open data sharing and science, and that usually means uh, HP allows you to So it's really nice. Um, great people uh, all around the world. And, uh, at this school fair, together we publish more than a nice hundred of my books. So that's around 23 percent of it, yeah, or something. It always goes down every time it was there. The only reason I have this slide is because I published it all. Okay. So, uh, here's Alice. Uh, she's a cat, and uh, she's like the other cat. She really likes uh, computers. <laughs> um, but computers aren't really that much fun. Uh, she quickly took her out, so a bunch of her friends told her to uh, hook it up to the internet. Because then you can uh, watch videos and stuff, and it's right there. So that's nice. Uh, but uh, she quickly figured out that you know having a having a desktop computer it can really be 2017. So everybody was like, you gotta get you know. Cool laptops and stuff, and uh, maybe she got a laptop like mine that's like very fancy and has unique PCs. It's best to buy like a hundred dollar laptop. The best thing about all the adapters is that uh, you need one for every output, so you quickly end up spending more money on adapters. Anyways, that's a whole different talk. Uh, so. The cool thing about having a laptop is that uh, you can, you know, you can take it places. Uh, can you put on your I don't know why it specializes for that though. But anyway, um, you can take it uh, places. I like to take mine and then go camping. Go to Alice. But one thing we really quickly figure out when you go camping is that uh, the internet doesn't always work. And uh, if there's no internet, you know, you can to this situation <laughs> where you just have a laptop. And uh, you can hide, which is fine for a while, but you know, it's kind of nice to be able to access stuff online also. So, the problem here is that all the cool content you use on websites and like desktop apps, and most of them assume some sort of just central host, and most of them assume some sort of connectivity to a central host. So, if everybody's trying to access the central host, and you can, either because the host is down or your internet is down, which is also very likely, uh, especially when you're traveling or you're on airplane or you know, there's a whole bunch of Wi Fi. Uh, everything breaks down. So it's because it's centralized, and we want to move from centralized to decentralized because that can't solve the problem. Because then we can have a situation like this where you know we don't care that the server is down or that the Wi Fi doesn't work because we can just get the data from other people. Uh, or just have the local data already in the cache. And if we make a system like this, and we make it uh, really solid, we don't even have to trust everybody in the network. We can have bad actors come in, and it still works because we have a you know, secure protocol. So it's just a very strong model. Um, so Thing to learn, uh, learn here is that we need to move to more PHP data structures for our websites uh, because by using PHP data structures, we get offline for free, uh, we get better scalability, and um, we get this mesh network where we can actually get this paid from other people. Uh, so if you imagine a campsite, you could be, you would be able to get data from other people in the campsite. It's kind of like a sneaker uh, network. That's pretty awesome. So, the pen only the rest of the <laughs> So 
uh, what is an opinion argument? Um, well, it's, my, it's a good data structure that I'll talk about around. and it's my favorite one because it's probably the most simple data structure, most powerful data structure you'll ever end up working with. So it basically works like this. Uh, Log is just a fancy word for this that some computer scientists thought was cooler than this, and then ended up producing every kind of because we also use Log for like one uh, But you have a list, and you have a piece of data in the list. And then you do this fancy thing where you say, let's call this piece of data at zero, because it's the first one. And then uh, you have some other data you want to share, and you just attend it to the list, and you call it one. And then when you have more data, you just append it to the list, and call it two. And the only thing you're allowed to do with this list is append to it. Hence, and append only a list, or append only log. Uh, so it's basically a list that only grows uh, and it has this cool property of uh, logical ordering where if something is called two, you know that it's uh, arrived later than, uh, uh, sorry, it was added later than something called zero. So it's kind of like a really fancy word that would be a vector plot, but it doesn't matter. It's just like the higher the number, the newer the data. Um, and when, uh, so that's basically an epitome log. And the first thing, first question you usually get asked is that uh, only one out of this gets because it's something that only ever is appended to. And that is true if you only ever store data and you run out of disk, but an append only log doesn't mean that you're not allowed to only get some of the data, you're just not allowed to override all data. So in this example, for example, you could just choose to only get data item number two, and not zero one if you're not interested in it, but the person appending to this are not allowed to go back in time and change what zero means. So once you write to zero, it's stuck. It's like a beautiful data structure now. <coughs> Mutability is all the way now, because of funding, so I like to say mutability a lot. So, the cool thing about append-only list dialogs is that they're very easy to digest. First of all, uh, if I want to communicate that I have uh, three items here, I can just say uh, I have three items because they all want to go with the numbers. So if I have all of them, I can just say three, I have three. And then the other person, uh, can uh, figure out that I have you know all the items and replace the ones they want, uh, or I can very easily compress this down into a, a set of numbers like a table or description like that. So it's a very efficient data structure in terms of communicating what you have and what you want. Communicating what you want is just communicating numbers. The numbers are very small, um, so that's awesome. It's also very easy to implement. Um, they're also very easy to securely share and easy in quotations if you ever work with security uh, and crypto. So basically, the only thing you need to think about is these things called Merkle weak trees, um, which is something that was invented in the 70s and kind of solves <coughs> most security problems today with data structures. So I'll try to briefly explain what it is, um, but you can look it up online if you're interested. It's really cool. Um, Basically, you have an append only log, and if you have the simplest append only log, only has one piece of data. What you do is you take a hash of that data. So if you're not familiar with what a hash means, it's just kind of like a fingerprint of the data, where you take you know a huge piece of data and you just break it down to like a small fingerprint. And it's, it's one way. So the same data always gives the same hash, but you can't go backwards. You can't go from the hash to the data. So like a fingerprint, basically. Um, so. You have one piece of data, you take the hash. This is technically a tree, if you're a computer scientist. Um, which, and it was invented by the Eichel Verbal in So it's more interesting if we add more data. So if we add more data, we try to balance this as a binary tree. So two nodes, there's one parent. The parent has uh, two children, that was, that's what binary tree means. And we just, instead of just taking the hash of one of the pieces of data, we just take the hash of both of them. Uh, so roll only another one hash data. You have a bit more interesting if we have one more piece of data. Because uh, then it's not a complete factor of two. So we, again, we do the same thing with the two, two first, we hash them. Then we hash the second one. And then we get two hashes and we apply the same technique recursively. And get a parent hash out. So the hash always, always ever, only ever has two children. Right? Very important. And it's uh, recursively because again, actually have more data. So why? That seems silly. Well, a really important thing here is that if 
uh, you communicate with some hash and you trust that hash, uh, that hash actually verifies the entire data structure because it actually it's subhashing everything because the top hash hashes the parent uh, children hashes and the children hashes the data. Uh, so we end up with this flexible data structure where you only have to trust a little bit of data and then you um, can actually verify all pieces of data that I'm about. And you can even uh, use this technique to only, if you trust the top hash, only for example get data item number one. And then you can use a little bit of math to only uh, verify that one. So don't even have to uh, replicate the entire thing, you can just replicate pieces of data that one and then verify that you trace the hash. Um, so it's a very strong uh, data structure. It's actually what's powering uh, all the browser tools out there, uh, like BitTorrent and stuff like that. And it's very simple. Um, but I like a lot. Uh, so it's very easy to use this to take a lot and security. Um, the only problem is that every time you add data, this top hash uh, changes. It's an impact of time. So uh, that's not very uh, flexible if you're building like a live application. So what you can do is you can sprinkle a little bit of crypto on top where you use a, 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 a public private key <coughs> to sign that hash and just trust that key pair instead. Anyways, crypto, I can talk about crypto. <coughs> so um, what I did was I took all this and some more stuff and implemented this in a JavaScript module called uh, Hyperflow. I like to prefix everything with Hyperflow. Uh, that's uh, uh, how you get all the names on here. And uh, I want to show a demo of this. It's kind of fun. So let's go here. Make a JavaScript file. And then make a strong prefix if you can see it. So I already have installed Hyperforest. And what you can do is you can just require it. And uh, you can instantiate it. And the first argument here is a uh, storage provider where you store data uh, because that way it's flexible to use both in Node and in the browser because Node and the browser storage together are different. In Node, you have access to the file system, and the browser, you don't. So, uh, you have to pick and choose. So, for the purpose of this demo, you just want to store things in memory. And do this by passing this memory provider. <coughs> And that's it. The cool thing about this module, one of my favorite things, is that it actually only has one of two interesting methods. And one of them is, of course, one called append, because it's an append on the log. So it's a database that you can call append to. So you can do stuff like append hello. So if I run this program, uh, nothing happens because we're not doing anything. We're just appending stuff and we're appending to memory. But uh, what I can also do is I can say, Great read stream flag true, which means that it's a stream of the log, and live means I keep it open, wait for data to arrive, and then on data, data is console log data true stream. So if I run this now, I see a hello log, um, and it I append again, we get a little world out. So, this is really uh, fancy. It's like you can probably implement this with an array or something. Uh, but the cool thing is that this is actually a um, secure data structure. So, we can actually use this to replicate to other people. Um, so, I can try and do that real quick. I think I'm missing a bunch of things as well. So, the way you do this is that you just connect it to other peers. I have a module for finding all the fields called hybrid discovery. Actually, my friend wrote it, but who cares? <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll take credit for anything. <coughs> it's really simple because the only thing you need to do is you need to do discovery, and then pass in this log, and then uh, this log has a key. Which is just um, that uh, public key, the key pair, assigning that merge tree. So that's why I didn't find this one. So we can run this. 
this works. So this fancy link here actually verifies this uh, hello world data. And if I restart, I'll get a new one because we're running in memory. But uh, what we can do is we can actually uh, pass this key as the second argument here to the to the log, and then it'll um, expect something else to be appending to the log, and then um, uh, just join that data uh, structure. So if I run this. Remember my directories. Demos. Editing the program while you're running it. This will work. There we go. Get that key out. Go it in. Come on, come on. So this way, uh, this table down here just uh, ask the network if anybody sharing the same thing and it's perfect if you have this key in the list with someone. Attaching to that is not perfectly the data. It actually works across the internet also, so you can run this in the computer because it's using a decentralized uh, um, network to find more people. It's actually using the data findings to use the data purposes. So, cool. Uh, in order of that's kind of boring. Uh, you can try the whole world. But the cool thing is that you can actually run this in the browser also. One of the cool things, there's a lot of cool things we'll get to. So, if I go back to the more simple program here, just a little world again, let's see that it still works. So it works. Uh, I can actually uh, browserify this using the program called Wizard that just browserifies on the fly. And then, put this in Chrome, and then, it will browser file and it will print out the world. So that also works in the browser, um, which is kind of neat. Um, so, what can we use this for? Well, uh, we can actually use this to build some very simple applications uh, that are quite powerful. So, a very simple application uh, that's basically just an append only log is something like a Twitter, uh, especially if you're like me and the only tweet and you're over five anybody. Um, so Twitter is like you have a box and you treat something and it gets added to a timeline and the timeline is just a non-computer word for an independent mode because it's just something that only gets, ever gets attended to uh, but you might not want to see the entire thing so it's only to like it to. Um, and on Twitter you can't even edit so they're probably using uh, pure memory of the behind the scenes at the scale. So let's try and uh, see if we can build something like that. So what we can do is uh, I can just Bust out some front end skills and do like in an HTML. This is my favorite ES6 feature, the template string. Uh, I'll show you the like this now. So we need an input box, and then we need some new lines. Because we don't want it to. Uh, oh, and we need a text area to go treats it. And get some new lines. No CSS here. And then a button to like submit. Like to get a copyright attention from Twitter. Pretty cool. So uh, let's see how this works. So to refresh this. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I love browsers sometimes. Got it. That's not my first time with that. 
I kind of like that you just work with the person. So this is, this is pretty good for the Twitter guy, if I can say so myself. Uh, so what we'll do is in that uh, input box up here, we'll put the key, because the key is like our uh, code ID, that's our username. It is not thanks to Twitter. So when it's ready, we'll do document query selector input value equals drug dot t to string x. Just kind of put this in a variable called door and pretend it's a curve. <laughs> So now every time I click here, it, it actually has to depend on the log. Seventy. Oh God. There you go. Um, so uh, we can interact with it now. This is just running code so far. So let's give it that whole world is kind of boring to me. So then up here, uh, we need to uh, render the trees also. And the best way to render it is just make it there. And then just uh, in our HTML, the tree. Then we can actually support the HTML, which is kind of fun. And then document body and child. So when there's a peer, we pipe it to our log and tell them to start replicating uh, over just normal no streams. And then uh, you need to do this kind of pipe that way, pipe that way. 
Uh, and then uh, I guess we also want to print out. Uh, so let's see the window we can use to this Set it to the key, and then we say here we expect the key, uh, maybe the key is being passed in as the hash. So just trying to it. Okay, fancy stuff. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I want to see if this works before me. So, this up here, I just added the key up here. And, uh, it's the tree up here. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, what I can do now, hopefully, is put this in another browser. And then, uh, if uh, everything uh, is fancy. They'll find each other and then uh, start replicating. Let's make this a little bit smaller. So think about this browser as somebody else in the campsite. And uh, I send it because it's a fun camping trip. So, um, well, I'll probably disconnect this one. Yeah. My network is pretty easy on table right now. But I'll probably reconnect and start replicating with those. Um, so, you know, it's very cool for me. Even when I had box, it's the worst. It's a cool thing about the computer data structures because everything is verified. You know, I've never like write that data, so we just recover and print out a bunch of errors. Just pick more errors. <laughs> cool. Um, okay, we've got a little bit of time to just make this a little bit more fancy. Um, so, this only has one downside, which is that if I tweet about it, some people do, I know some people do. Really do. <laughs> so I get tweeted a lot and they lie. Uh, at the end. If I tweet a lot and then uh, somebody uh, joins this uh, Twitter, this is a very common problem, I think, for peer programs. It immediately starts replicating all the data. And if I have like a zillion tweets, I'm not interested in a zillion tweets, I'm interested in the last 10 tweets. Right? That's, like, that's where it starts happening. I might want to go back in time at some point and find all these, but you know, I'm interested in the latest ones. I don't want to waste bandwidth on getting all the data. Um, and Penelope actually supports this. It's just called uh, sparse replication. So what I can do here is I can pass sparse true as an option. <coughs> and uh, then we can do a quick hack here where we say get the third item. Because by getting the third item, we know how many items there are. Uh, and then we can say star uh, log length minus, let's get the last five tweets, uh, and max is zero in case it's negative. So this way we're saying uh, uh, get the log and then uh, just start by getting the last um, uh, five ones and then continue getting them. I think I need to add true here, but I have true, that's why I put this in. So let's try this real quick. Uh, so hopefully I can just refresh this here. So now it's only uh, replicating the next five, uh, but you still have that, you know, using the API, it's still the same design, but it's just uh, only getting the last five. It's actually, not, it's not getting anything else now, but it's still attaching to uh, to this, so we get new tweets. So you have this very powerful data structure that you know gives you kind of the best of both worlds. Situation where you just get the latest data because it doesn't cost the user once, so like big UX improvement, uh, but still have like history. And it's all secure. There's like no way somebody can start adding the data to it because the data up here verifies that security using it for Cool. That's uh, uh, my Twitter clone. I actually have this online on nothing such as Neo Cities slash Twitter that HTML because it's written in the small page. So, uh, you can go there and try it out if you want. Um, this one has, let me just pretty sure this, it's like a little fun feature where um, you can do like, uh, this, the, the receiver has a place box so it actually doesn't work. It's only the first person. Um, but uh, this has a cool feature where you can, uh, you can add an image to it. So, I'm going to 
images and their images and 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 so this is just one use case of open and roles. There's really a huge amount of use cases. Uh, once you start getting into it, you quickly figure out that almost all problems of data sharing can be boiled down to open and uh, which is really interesting in a non-abstract way. So for example, uh, this is one of the project uh, live streaming. I'm live streaming video. If you wanted to live stream this video, right, and not pay for it, you can use the memory logs. Uh, basically, what you need, only thing you need to do, and only in quotation marks, is uh, just parse the video. Every time there is a keyframe in the video, a keyframe just means like uh, an old picture. Just write that keyframe to the to the log, uh, and then share the log because then you can just seek it and read easily. Uh, so uh, I wrote a little app for that. Uh, just quickly then, it's called Hypervision because it's like television from <laughs> Uh, and a really friendly uh, online person called Lewis uh, actually made a UI for it. So now this is cool. So it's, just, it's an electron app, you can just run. Uh, so I won't take credit for the UI, because I didn't do any of it. But you can click go live, and it starts uh, doing like this. And um, then you can start recording, and you get this similar link out, which is like an appendix log. And then uh, the only thing you need to do is spin out another version on our pure. I don't have our pure, so I'm just going to do the same one. And then um, in this box here, you can put in a uh, delay. And this is the lead delay now. So I can prove it like this. <laughs> Uh, I usually, the way I keep up this is I film all the shit. The way I keep up this is very good. They probably had an error and didn't recover because it's just true, so that's not. Um, and the cool thing is that this is just an append only log of these uh, video files. Um, and the video files are actually just uh, valid uh, workin files. So I think I can just do this. <coughs> so it's just a valid workin file that we're just indexing for a key thing. And we're putting it into an antenna log in So it's really reasonable. Uh, this application is probably like a hundred lines of code or something. It's on GitHub. Okay, so. Um, yeah, we did demo that. Uh, you can use it to build file sharing. Um, that's what we do at the dev project. Uh, it's very easy. Instead of using one binary log, just use two binary logs. You have one where you just put all of this files you're sharing because then you can get that really quickly. You have one other one where you put all the files in there. Uh, I implemented this and it's called Hyperdrive. Um, and uh, Let's see, we'll do a quick demo of it, it's fine. It's very, very simple. Uh, it's a desktop app, there's also a command line tool where uh, I have a version. That is a command line tool. Uh, we have an experimental one called that next, and then I have my own experimental one called that mix next. That's a really super experimental one. <laughs> but the only thing you need to do is run that inside a folder. There's a, a desktop app also. And then you get this key out. And then what you can do is you can actually share this key to a friend of yours. So I'm just going to uh, put this on the server to show that it actually works as well. And then next, next is key. And then um, the only thing you need to do is uh, put stuff in this folder like you would with Dropbox. So, by adding these files, I can add, add those files to the pen on the log, and then the server actually starts downloading them. And uh, I have them on my terminal, even though the server is in a different country. 
so we have to use uh, kind of like Dropbox. Uh, uh, actually, have this cool at uh, these slides. I'm sure now are actually on a hyperdrive, which is being a live share for the rest of the user group. So uh, I can pull it to you by going to this. So this is my uh, index page of my hyperdrive, uh, <laughs> and it's just a folder. It's just a folder, um, like any other folder, here. Uh, so this image page is just a normal little folder. That's this cool HTML page. So if I edit this, uh, it'll add the file again. So it's adding it because it's, it's watching it directly, and then uh, uh, it's, it's cool that you're on the website now. So it's like live in that sense that it just keeps watching it and sharing live uh, to a different server, which is on a remote server. Uh, the so very simple, very easy to use from the end user, which is really important for us. Ooh. Oh man, I can't remember what I put this What's this one? Oh yeah, my slides go kind of janky. So a picture of them. This is my front-end skills. Okay, it's a quick recap, basically. <laughs> this is why we have cash in the bottom. Uh, you just gotta remember how to work. Oh yeah, it's all running over a tether mobile connection, so I feel like this is slower than my image. It's probably because all my images are really high res. It's probably like a megabyte image. Uh, <coughs> but PG is not very happy for him to one slide. Oh, this is my last slide. <laughs> cool. Um, there we go. Yeah, do that. Read a demo. It's all that thing. That's awesome. And that's my slide. Thank you. <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, you probably wouldn't share this thing. You probably hide that link behind, uh, you know, like your, uh, or in a, in a, in a, Thank you. Thank you very much.